Alright, well, I'm gonna try and run you through this story real quick, and since I have 15 minutes, I'm on my way to get Dad's pizza. Um, so, initially, back in um, January, Dad, uh, you know, since moving out here to Las Vegas, you know, he's been close to us, and, um, you know, I needed a lot of support at work, so for me to do well, like, Dad, he kind of raised his hand saying that he would help us with the boys, and, um, for the last six months, he's been coming in, um, staying in the casita for almost an entire week, because he likes it there, it's a little bit bigger than his trailer, um, but he would come in and stay basically, like, Monday through Thursday, or Sunday through Thursday, and take the boys to school so I can go to work during the peak, and, um, be at my absolute best, and so, um, right around Christmas time, I just, I noticed that dad, you know, he wouldn't have a beer with me, he wouldn't, you know, eat near as much, um, and noticed, like, he just, you know, never consumed as much as he used to, so over, like, the next couple of weeks from Christmas, you can tell that dad, you know, his stomach was starting to hurt him, something was wrong, so I kept encouraging, like, dad, go get checked out, dad, just go get checked out, so, um, more and more, I, you know, he kept getting sick. I would go out to the casita, and I'd see him kind of curled up with his little heater on. He'd get the chills. He would get cold. Then all of a sudden, he'd be hot. And so it's right around January 19th or 20th. Um, I told him, Dad, like, enough's enough. You know, I've got this, you know, doctor. I called him already. I set this up. You just go get checked out. You can walk in. It's fine. Just go to a clinic. Go somewhere. And so sent him to go back home to his trailer in Pahrump. And he calls me that night, and uh, he says, "Well, oh, buddy, it's as bad as you can imagine." And so my heart just kind of sank and dropped for a minute. He goes, well, "I got a blood clot on my liver, and um, the doctor said I had cancer." And so, like, I was at the table with my family. I immediately stood up and just started walking towards the garage because I knew I was going to lose it. And like, I, I go into troubleshoot mode like that okay what do we got to do like what can you do like you know we're going to treat and all my dad wanted to do was that night was just go to sleep and get rest and I didn't know how to react and so um I was a hot mess so I told dad like hey I'll give you tomorrow to rest but we've got to try and get you checked out and I'll call you in the morning to see how you're doing so I did that. Um, I called him. He was like, yeah, I'm, I just want to rest. I'm, I'm okay right now, but I just want to rest. I'm tired. So I said, Dad, I'll call you tomorrow and check in on you again. And so um, call him on Saturday, and his stomach is just, you know, he can't eat anything, can't even drink Gatorade, can't get anything down and through his system. And he goes, buddy, I don't feel good. And I said, I know, Dad. I'm, I'll give you an hour. I'll be up there. So I drive up to Perum. I pick him up and um, drive him all the way back. You know, he's got his cooler bag, his clothes, everything in case he gets sick in the car. He's got like these severe hiccups. Um, they're just painful for him, is what it looks like. And um, as we're driving, you know, it's super quiet and like every, I'm just, I'm so nervous about what is about to happen because I don't know. But I uh, talked to Jennifer's parents, and they said, take him to Spring Valley. So um, as we approached Spring Valley, Dad asked me if uh, I called this place. I said, no, Dad, you're going to the ER. He's like, are you serious? I was like, yep, you're going to the ER. So I take him in um, pretty busy for a Saturday, and I try and, like, push around and get my dad checked because clearly he's got a lot of problems. And, you know, not that I want my dad to take priority over everybody, but his condition was pretty severe, um, and I didn't know what to do. So I try to get him checked out. It takes about an hour at least to get him, you know, at least to a room, get seen. Um, and so when I go through the conversations with some of the nurses and the doctors, they do the scans on dad. He does have the blood clots. He does have some issues, but he has what's uh, also called an intestinal block. So nothing can get through his system, basically, um, without either him throwing it up or getting sick. So the first thing that they have to do to kind of relieve some of the pressure in his stomach is give him what's called an NG tube. And that um, 
I didn't know what that was, but basically it's a, uh, <laughs> a lathered up tube that they shove in your nose all the way down to your stomach and it starts pumping fluid out. So the process to get that tube um, into your stomach is they shove it in your nose and you have to kind of lean your head forward and swallow at the same time. And um, boy, that was rough. So I sat there with my dad and I said, we got this. Okay, we'll do it. The nurse said she's pretty good at him, so I trusted her. And after the first five minutes or so, like it kept failing. And you see that tube actually, when it goes through my dad's nose, it actually started coming out of his mouth. And this whole time he's coughing and gagging and throwing up. And it's just kind of a nightmare to watch a nurse try and put that in. So um, after a couple more attempts, my dad takes a pause and says, no, he can't do it. And so I completely understand, but I'm still trying to push him because I know that he needs help. And so we finally get that tube in his system and um, immediately like these things just start coming out of dad and it's scary, you know, cause they're going into this bucket and you're seeing all kinds of things that shouldn't be. And it's just kind of a nightmare. So I told my dad, I'd, I'd wait for him. I'll do whatever it takes. Like, so I spent the whole day at that hospital um, at the ER waiting for dad. They check him in, get him a room. Um, and that's when we started our journey at, at Spring Valley. Um, I remember that was day one, January 21st. And so that was a, a very, very tough day. And um, a couple of days later, like I think, you know, I'll try and recall a lot of this as I go, but a couple of days later, um, they decide that they're gonna have to do a surgery on dad just to try and release some of the intestinal blocks. So um, they take him in, uh, they, cut a rather large hole right over the top of his belly button and go into his intestines and they remove an intestinal block. So um, dad comes out of surgery one okay, except for his wound is just massive. It doesn't quite heal. Um, and like, lo and behold, they thought that they got the only intestinal block, but as dad tried to eat stuff and come out of the first surgery, he couldn't. And so um, kind of the same story, had to get the NG tubes in, had to get restraints, had to um, go through a lot of things just to make sure that he can get stuff through his system. And, you know, he tried to eat, tried to do a whole bunch of stuff, and just couldn't do it. So again, they did another scan, found another intestinal block. So this is block number two. And they had to go in and try and now fix his wound because it kept splitting open, um, which they had to put some mesh in there underneath his stomach lining. So basically his intestines would fall out. And um, so we agreed to do surgery number two. And every single time, like, I'm there with dad, they always ask me, do you want, you know, us to resuscitate him? Do you want us to give him blood? Does he need all these things? I said, yes, yes. Like, whatever you got to do, just, just fix him. And so dad goes into surgery number two, and the doctors call me and say, you know, the surgery went okay, but your dad can't breathe on his own. So I'm like, well, okay, well, what does that mean? Is like this life support? Is this like, what is, what's going on? And so um, I go into the hospital and basically dad's on a breathing tube and this thing is pumping oxygen into his body and he's basically unconscious. And to me, it looked like life support. And that was really scary. Um, you know, watching dad through that, you know, he was on life support for 10 days, um, and that was after surgery, too. So they removed the intestinal block. Dad's on life support, still not breathing. And what they have to do to get him off of those things and off of the, the, the breathing tube is they have to basically shut the system down and see if he can breathe on his own. Well, Dad's a stubborn ass, and so attempt number one for Dad to come off of the breathing tube, he fails. And so... I asked the doctors, okay, what does this mean? You know, he failed a breathing test. Like, is he going to be on a breathing tube the rest of his life? They're like, no, we can probably do um, a tracheotomy because if he keeps the breathing tube down his esophagus, it's going to cause some problems. And um, I said, okay. Uh, so he, we go a couple more days, and I think it's about, you know, day nine or ten. He finally passes uh the breathing test and he can breathe on his own with some oxygen and we finally get the tube out, which was great. 
And so, um, after coming out of that, my dad basically had no voice, had nothing, couldn't speak, couldn't talk. Like you had this tube shoved down your throat for 10 days. It's not going to be comfortable and easy. So he, um, you know, came out of that second surgery. Okay. They still had a lot of work to do on his wound, but something wasn't right, I guess, mentally for my dad. And he would wander off in conversations. It never really happened before surgery too. You can tell like, you know, he got a little bit of ICU delirium and would just wander and be completely off. But there were stories about like, hey, make sure you wear a bulletproof vest because the demons are out. Or he was the captain of a ship and he was out in the middle of the ocean and it was hijacked. Or um, there was a helicopter right outside you know, which could have been the case, but, um, really bizarre, odd stories that my dad would just wander into. So it would be perfect conversation. And then all of a sudden, boom, like, wait, dad, what? No, like that's, you know, no. And so that was hard for me. Um, not knowing if he had a stroke, not knowing if something was wrong with his brain, um, especially going out of surgery number two, like you don't know what happened and so that was tough for me to understand and like it just kept getting worse and worse um so mentally well physically i guess over at spring valley they fixed him so they transferred him over to it's basically a rehab facility called pam and um you know it was nice they took him over there and he started doing okay like they passed him for um, foods, which dad could not eat anything. That's a whole nother story that I'll get into, but he could not eat anything. Um, of course, because surgery one, surgery two failed. So all of a sudden, you know, he's in Pam and they pass him for chopped foods. They pass him for stuff. And I'm really excited because I think that this is going to be a great opportunity to like rehab him. And so, um, we do all those things and, um, you know, he just started getting tired and weak at Pam. Like, didn't want to eat much, didn't want to get up, didn't want to move, didn't want to do a whole lot. And then, you know, I noticed, like, he stopped talking. He started becoming nonverbal. And with that, I was like, something's just off. Like, I told the nurses, like, something's off. And um, come to find out, like, I get a call from a nurse. I was at work. I think it was like a Thursday or a Friday morning that they're going to have to ship my dad right back to the ER because his hemoglobin levels were at 2.7, which is extremely low from what I understand. Some of the lowest levels that when they took my dad into Mountain View, that was some of the lowest levels that some of those doctors and nurses have ever seen without somebody dying. And so they immediately had to rush him five units of blood and um but going through that like i watched dad it was very tough i didn't know what to do that day so he was over at mountain view in the emergency room and he uh i almost lost him he just he had so much blood and then it was it was rough i'm gonna pause there